Howdy, this is Lucas here. I'm going to talk about something that I was having trouble finding information on on the internet. Um, so basically what this video is about is it's how to set up your Axe FX3 as an aggregate audio device so that you can still use all of the DI and reamping features that your XFX can do over USB while it's connected as an audio interface and you can do that with your existing interface as well and have both of them available. Um, so this is called creating an aggregate audio device on Mac operating system and uh, like I was saying, the, well actually one of the main reasons that I wanted to do this was I wanted to be able to record two guitars at once through the XFX both with DIs and do reamping and I can do all of that over USB, but I also happen to have the Universal Audio Apollo interface, so I obviously want to use that as well. The only downside, so if you're doing all that audio over USB with Dax Effects, it's great. The only downside is that you do not um, have the ability to connect those outputs to the Apollo and use the preamps on there, but that's fine, honestly, because I'd rather just get the clean signal um, anyway. And so basically, uh, there's no need to even connect any uh, quarter inch or XLR cables from the back of your Axe FX into the Apollo. You're just literally recording through USB on the Apollo. So the main confusing part was really just setting up these audio MIDI, this audio MIDI setup window on uh, on Mac. So I'm going to go through that real quick just to show you how I have this set up. Though I have Axe FX one, which is like my main output for Guitar One and the corresponding DI, and then I have XFX2, which is second guitar or bass, and the DI for that one, so I just saved this as a template. I'm just gonna go through this one by one, though. So, if you hit the plus sign here, you can create an aggr aggregate device. Um, you will just check your main interface first, and then check XFX3 and enable drift correction, which should be on by default. Luckily, everything here is labeled, because it can get really confusing. So, I happen to have uh, 32 inputs on the Apollo XAP, 34 outputs, and then the Axe FX is kind of tacked on over here. So these numbers may vary depending on how much I.O. you have. So you may have to check the Axe FX manual just to get your head wrapped around all this. Check the manual just to familiarize yourself with all the inputs and outputs that the Axe FX, Axe FX unit offers. Because this can be like a little confusing and is kind of crucial to understand. Um, so once you have this going, what I did was I opened up my preferences, input configuration, Remember, we created a new um, audio device. You can go ahead and select it here. I labeled it Apollo and Axe Effects just so it's crystal clear for my input and output. I opened up my input configuration and I went through all of these and I just have what I need to use right now. So I labeled it clearly and enabled it using these checkboxes. Um, but I just wanted to be like super obvious on Ableton, like what everything's doing. That way it's not confusing at all because if it's all numbers it's so horrible <laughs> so um the axe effects ones that i think are a little bit more confusing because you have to read the manual to figure out uh you know what, what each input does for me it happens to be 33 through 40 but um, essentially i have my main output secondary output and then both di's there so the di's on the axe effects i believe are according to the manual five and six and seven and eight so that's what we got here, labeled. Okay, once you're done with that, you can create your tracks and do it accordingly. I already did this. I actually saved this as a group, and if you just drag your group over here into your places, you can literally have it saved, so I can just drag this out anytime I want to record two guitars with DIs. Now on the Axe Effects software side, which can also be a bit confusing, check this out. So I have in one, going all the way through to out one and then into going all the way to out two. So I have my first guitar plugged right into the front on the instrument jack or you can there's also an instrument jack on the back and then I have the guitar two or bass plugged into input two and uh, I use these sends and returns but you don't have to do that I just wanted to have a bunch of extra real estate but it's, it's just going in one out one into out two and then in setup, this is also super important, so you need to make sure all this is set up correctly. Analog, analog, and you need your USB output 7, 8 source to be input 2. So this is going to send the DI from input 2 to 7 and 8, which we need to have your DI for the second guitar. 
And then you need to also check your input levels. So instrument one and instrument two, I turn them down a little bit. This, so these two inputs might sound different if uh, like one of the guitarists has uh, like a higher output pickup or whatever. So you need to balance that out in the session if you want um, to, to get the gain like sort of dialed in. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope that makes sense. I couldn't really find much info on this, so let me know if this was helpful and if you have any other tips for like running a setup like this. So we're doing dual interfaces. I freed up some real estate on my Apollo now so I can connect more stuff there. And you don't even need audio cables from your Axe FX to your interface, so you're just running at USB only and you plug in your guitars there. So let me know what you guys think. Peace out.